find me, Sheena Douglas, here on Create and Craft. If you love to knit, then you love Derrimores, the UK's number one online knitting superstore. With the biggest range of yarn and patterns in the UK, Derrimores is passionate about providing value, choice and outstanding customer service. Order before 5pm Monday to Friday or by 1pm on Saturday and we'll dispatch the same day with free first class delivery on orders over £25. Derrimores, the award winning online knitting superstore. Got it going on, Jen. We're going to win this one. Absolutely. Oh, 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 wonderful. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, you have to vote for the best dancers throughout the day. Score between one, but one to ten, please. We can move about a bit, can't we? Now then, do you like warm dances? In your arms, yes. Yeah. You're heavy breathing, you're heavy breathing, love. <laughs> well, listen, normally I'd be in bed on a Sunday. Now, the thing is, hang on, hang on a second. You said earlier on, you're a bit more of a freestyle type I'm of absolutely. Go on. Go for it. Oh, right. Well, that's not very freestyle, is it? Listen to the music, love. Oh. I need to get your hips going. What you do? Right. Spin, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. right. Right then, here are the terms of conditions. <coughs> <laughs> I can't believe she did that. In celebration of our Strictly Craft event, ladies and gentlemen, I'm reading this now because I can't, I can't make it up. We'll be running a dance competition, as you've just seen, between now and a little bit later on, in which the presenters will be dancing with guests, and uh, we want your scores between 1 and 10. Be, be kind. I was going to say, be kind. Okay, each couple will dance at the beginning of the various shows throughout the day, scoring at closes at 15 minutes before the end of the show. So, uh, back quarter two. Okay, so back quarter two, I want you to stop voting. I said there was going to be lots of ballroom today, didn't I? In those trousers, yes. <laughs> you said it was like moving a wardrobe. I know I can't dance. No, I did say that, so I did better. Yes, like, stare. Like moving a wardrobe. It was like moving a wardrobe, Jen. Right, um, can we get on with it, please? I'm sweating again. Last show I started in my tux, I'm always sweating. Oh. Let's move. You're amazing. Oh. Oh. That's uh. amazing to do that on a Sunday morning. I got up at 10 to 3. I need the champagne. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to all of you sitting there in your jammers, or maybe not, as I know some people might be. Oh, yes. <sighs> Right, We've got you know some what? new fabric. That's how we start start our day in showbiz, do we? Hey, that. By far and away, the where's the where's the anyway, broomstick? Anyway, let's it? get back. No, we got no. Leave, leave the broomstick. Leave it. It's, I'm worried about the Halloween. Oh, it's Halloween. Point of it. This is Halloween. Well, I was scared. I don't know about you. Thank you. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sunday morning here at Creighton Craft. Getting more bizarre by the day. Um, this is a time for you to enjoy the amazing, amazing talents. She may look dancing okay, <laughs> yeah, but dancing I think when, nil it, point. when it comes nil to point. fabric <laughs> and when it comes to things, all things sewing, yes. you are the queen, Listen, my darling. I'm strictly spelling today. Strictly spelling. Yes, because of the witching. Spelling. The witching hour. The witch bothered and bewildered. That's what you won't be. Mm. 
Start the car. Right, come on. Right, uh, three, two, seven, eight, four, five is your first item up on the screen. What we're going to be doing is we're going to spend an hour with Jenny. I know you love this show, and you're going to be taking us through lots of different things. Yes, just give us a quick snippet of some of the things. Right, Obviously, we've got a Halloween is, thing. Okay, we are working our way through six blocks. Okay. We're going to do pumpkins, cats, witches in front of moons, hats, cobwebs. There's a bat. And we're going to do a table mat, which is in front of me, and you can't see it yet. Fabulous stuff. So we're going to be doing all of that in this show. I'm going to go sit over there and, and judge and, and relax. Yes. Exactly, yeah, and just adjust you myself. Um, but what we're going to do is very, very quickly go through some of the items you've bought yes. us today. Because yes. I know that you've got some uh, old favourites, but also some new lovely we've stuff. Some fabulous fabrics. Fabulous fat quarters for you. Let yep. me give you the details of those first of all. Trick or treat! As much like that last <laughs> item. 327845 is your item number. It's 100% cotton fat quarters for £8.99 with a Halloween. Scary, scary, spooky scary. thing. But they're not really spooky. They're no, fun, they're not aren't really they? Spooky. They're fun. You've got spiders. You've got ghosties. You've got pumpkins. And you've got a joke. Have we? Right. In America, there is the legend of the Sleepy Hollow. Yes. And the ghost comes out of the Sleepy Hollow yes. and terrifies everybody. Yes. So on this fabric, they have written Happy Halloween so that the children won't be too happy. Happy Halloween. You see, play on words there. Yes. Okay. Exactly. They might have spelt it wrong, it's neither here nor there, but <laughs> we're convinced it's a we'll, ghost of We're scene. going with it, aren't we're we? We're going with it. Anyway, I didn't notice. I don't know so nothing wrong with that at all. You did indeed. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, 100% cotton, which means you're getting fabulous fabric, fabulous products, and um, and just eight pounds and ninety-nine pence. You want to get home for this? Five all. pieces in it all. Yes, it does it all. You, you don't need any more. That, you that, need, that's all you need for it. what Jenny's about to show Plus you. This one. Now, also, we've got uh, the autumn. Now, this is the fat quarter, which I love. The autumn blossoms are beautiful. Yeah. Lime greens, orange, and green, um, blues here. Um, you've got six pieces for eight ninety-nine again. Three, two, seven, eight, four, six. So this and combined you need with that, that and that make all the things on the show. There you go. The first two items on the show will make everything. On the show, eight ninety nine. Now we've also got some felt squares. Now felt is a good thing to have because it always reminds wonderful. me of school felt because yes. it's a wonderful you, starting the kids place. Kids can use it. Yep. Children use it. You can use it with your embellishment. <coughs> you can use it with your hand felting machine. You can cut it up, stick it on your cards, make Christmas decorations out of it. Of course, it doesn't fray, and you've got a whole load of different colours. And you'll need the pumpkin colours and the witch colour. Pack of ten for six twenty nine. Madness. Three two seven six eight six eight. It's a really nice felt. <coughs> It's a nice it's thin a quality, felt. Isn't it? yes, it's a nice feeling. It's not work. fluffy because I think no. cheap felt's quite no. fluffy, yes. isn't it? Yes, and, and and I worked on that, and it's a really nice. It's nice to apply. It's nice to work on the felting machine. It works. Beautiful. Yep. Okay, if you'd like um, to get hold of that, six pounds twenty nine. Again, very aff uh, very affordable. Now then, ha ha, ha, -ha. fusible fluff. The Hobbs heirloom fusible cotton blend. Web, uh, what, uh, what, uh, wadding. wadding. Uh, I'll say web in there. Right, this thing. 11.69. Now you're excited about this. Yes, because, Tell the people why. Okay, <coughs> the reason why I really like it is it's sticky on both sides. So all you do is you put your backing fabric down, you put your fluff, you put your top fabric on top, you then pass the iron slowly over the top of it and it all bonds together. No pins, no this, no that, no, bother. no tacking, no bother. No bother with the bond. Ace. And i tell you something. Yes. The quilt behind us, the one with the red and white stars on, that was done with this stuff. This one here? And somebody said, does it wash? So that quilt has been washed. Fabulous. I didn't pre-wash the fabric, so I was concerned about it running, so I slung it in the machine on a wash cycle. Well, it's, it's all wadded up, isn't yes, it? Yes, you feel it. it. Um, I put one of those colour catches in it because of the dark red and hung it over the banisters when I'd done, and it dried a treat. Beautiful. So it's very washable, this very stickable, Buy it now. brilliant stuff. Buy it now. 11.69, again, affordable. Now, <coughs> we've got the pom-pom maker. You're thinking, why do we need a pom-pom maker in a quilting show? Well, it's because we've got Halloween as a theme, and you need to make your spider six legged spider. Yeah, well, I can't count. Because you've got eight, darling. I know, I heard, heard that this morning on the radio. They were talking about arachnids. With arachnids, eight legs. yes. And I thought, well, this is an arachnid with six. We lost two. Bless him. Okay, but if um, you want to make your little spider, we've actually got um, the amazing little. Um, the, uh, it's a pom pom maker. Yes, pom -pom Back in the yes. day, we've all made these. Yes. But of course, with this, it's yes. got cardboard. It won't. So three different sizes, too. Because you take the middle out. Yes. There you go. You can look yeah. at that. You've got the yes. different colours there, which means you take the centre out or the outer, and you've got three different sizes. Eight ninety nine pom pom maker and triangle template. Now together, this is a thirteen ninety eight value. Yes. So you put these together, you're spending nearly fourteen quid. A nice little saving on Jenny's show. Why would I need that one then? You need that <coughs> one because that's for the cobweb. That is the cobweb on the design. That is the one at the back there with the, the cobwebs all over it. 
Okay. Really okay. useful. That you can also use it for a wide variety of other designs. Right. Okay. Uh, there you go. Great value. Eight ninety nine. Uh, call in right now. Keep moving along. Right. Because okay, one thing I've learned about this particular um, craft and skill is it's all about the templates. It's, it's all about, about templates. getting the cutting right. It's the accuracy. If you don't get the things right in the first place, forget it, mate. What have you got here, darling? Right. What we've got here, we've got a thirty degree triangle. Now this I've used in a variety of other shows, and it's been used to make the witch's hat. And it's on the blocks we have behind us, the Christmas decoration and indeed the blue and orange things that are over there behind me you can just see them in the top corner there up there, there you go you see Lovely. so that does that and then the circle you always need circles you can never find cups plates sources the right size and this does <laughs> half tried. circles whole circles i've tried quarter circles it's great for okay. circles it's great for grandmother's fan dress and plate all sorts of things where you need a circle for the Lovely. middle or you just need circles. or you could cut out circles and arrange them as we have on the red white and stripy thing on the wall over there and that's an amazing value if you think about this because that's exciting but this is normally 40 pounds and 98 pence. Yeah. 40, I'll say it again, 40 pounds and 98 pence is a combined price for those two items. 26.99 only in Jenny's yeah. show and only here this morning on Crate and Craft because this is where you make all your savings. Uh, I'm going to move on. This is quite a quick preview because yeah. I know you want to get on yeah. and see Jenny do her stuff. And then now we've and got... And also be voting. And be voting, yes. yes. Please be, be nice. Yes, be very kind. I think kind. they're going to show a clip. Are they? Yes. Oh dear. Move on. Move oh dear. A recap, but won't move. Anyway, uh, oh, we look, oh, there we are. There. Well, the hat's all right. Oh, no, that, that's the bit I wouldn't have changed. Hang on. Oh, she goes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those hips. <laughs> I tell oh, you what. No. I don't know that. I need the toilet. <laughs> well, well, I did. <laughs> Do you know what? Spon I was sponsored by... <laughs> hey, listen, I got up sane and sensible this morning. I'm here on... Why do I do this? Because I love, love it. it. <laughs> That's right. Okay, let's talk about these okay. next items. Right, then. here you've got three templates. Uh, these are plastic ones, so they're for really making pumpkins, is one of them, and they're two different sorts of flowers. Okay. You can use them in a variety of different ways. I think they're really great to use for the children. If you want a quick template, you simply trace around it, stick it down. You can do it in paper, you can do it in fabric, you can do it in felt, you can do it in anything. These are just good things to sort of pop in your crafty basket for your cards, your sewing, your dressmaking, put on your frocks, your pinnies, you name it. Good. Well, you've got all that, all that detail. I've got this detail. F another 14 quid here. Look, 14.97 you would normally pay 9.89. I know it's a fiver, but a fiver, a fiver, a fiver. Three, two, seven, seven, two, two. If you want to go for those, I give you the perfect template every single time for those particular projects. Because the things I've shown you so far, apart from the fabric, you're using over and over and over. Yeah, and all the time. Really you've, got them, you've got them. Tools for the trade. Next up, cat, fat cats. Now it's not what you think. Uh, three, two, seven, seven, two, five is your item number for the uneven nine patch. Ah, oh, then even nine packs. That old chestnut. Yeah. Twenty six pounds and ninety nine pence. <laughs> you haven't a clue. What you're I talking about. I do know. About. That. That, I know what. I know. Oh, I do know what it oh, is. Oh, do you? I've right. done enough shows with you, my darling. Right. Okay, fat cats does the fat cat. Does what it says on the Indeed. packet. Does fat cats in a variety of sizes. We oh, have so fat cats. And of course, right. you can't have a witch without a cat, can you? Fat cat with moustache. Yes. So we've got fat cat there. I did the fat cat not long ago in um, chenille fabric, which was really good. Right, so we've got fat cats, then we've got the uneven nine patch. And this is the one that I've used for the uneven. table mat, you mm. see. Cause you, it's actually quite a neat template. This. It is this one, isn't it? Because it, it has all the lines on it to make all the shapes. And I put the pumpkin in the middle, you see. From the patch mm -hmm. maker, you, you see. see? 26.99. We've got to move on. I'm quick, sorry about this. All these items, uh, that's £30.98 pence normally, 26.99. Again, all savings along the counter. And um, all of these items are available on the website, creatorcraft.tv. I'm going to fly through these, but yes. they're the cutters. You've yes. been talking about yep. more detail. Yep. Yep. Rotary cutters in three different sizes. I've got the 28mm here for 13 49 327726. I've got the 45mm here on your screens now for 11.69. Great value. Normally 16 Absolutely. quid. And then the 60mm, which is then the big boy, as it were, uh, 327729, 1349, normally 1797. So here's your three rotor cuts. They all come with a spare blade, which is fantastico, and the protector as well. But more than that, uh, it comes with a box. Now it doesn't actually fit into this box, but this is your yes, little this, toolbox. This is isn't your it? I, I have one. I have one for young. And you can get at it by opening it in a variety of places. You can open it here, and then you can also tip it back that way. You can't feel what pen. It's a very, very so clever it idea, isn't it? Okay, it's a very clever good. idea. So if all the cuts come with a spare blade. I would suggest if you want one, you have that one. If you want another one, you go small or large. If you want to be extravagant, have a lot. If you, it's all about come you, have a lot. Go on, come on, Halloween. Moving on quickly. <coughs> oh, right, okay. Some notes. No, that's not. That's a, that's a, the PDF. That's not notes. <laughs> 
No, what I mean is, if covering, if covering it up like that. I was always writing that. Right, OK, we've got three templates here. You do the housekeeping. Yes, dear. Two seven, you know, tell our man, can't you? Uh, three, two seven five nine eight seven. Not as much experience as you, though. Uh, easy quilt angle bundle. They're four and a half, four and a half, four and a half inch easy angle. Four and a half inch lefty righty square. That they'll just clean those. And the mini ruler as well. Twenty eight seventy seven is your item number. But this is a, a wee little yes, set. Yes, they're good. It's great for to craft. It's great if you want to begin a new hobby and you don't want to produce and show your partner or your girlfriend or your boyfriend that you've got all these extra tools because you can hide these. Good. You can spread them about your purse. Absolutely, in the handbag. But this will do your four and a half inch squares. These are ideal for all the blocks on today's classroom. Beautiful yep. for 2877. And then we're going to what I, would, what I would, just, would say essential elements for this. We've actually got these out. We don't do any quilts. We've got them just for the sewing and curtain yeah. making, all yeah. sorts. Yeah. Really, really fabulous. If you can afford to go for these. And this is the first time I can offer you FlexiPay today, ladies and gents. Got FlexiPay available in this, which means interest free credit. The Simplicity Essential Elements Bundle. Uh, you've got the Simply Easy Quilting Square and the Easy Rule 2. 44.99, and I'd say really, if you are serious about this, maybe go for these. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing that if you're going to start patchwork, go for those. But if you can't afford it, haven't got space, go for the other lot. Good stuff. It's choice okay. and money for everyone. And of course, you've got flexi pay, which means you can put other items in there as well. And then. Then we've got the rotary cutter, uh, rotary cuttery, rotary cuttery, the rotary mat. cuttery mat. It is useless having a cutter without a mat. Because you'll ruin the house. You'll ruin it and you might as well have the mat and the cutter because you get the cutter, a spare blade and a mat. So and that's I a 45 minutes, that's perfect size. What you it? really yeah. want to do, probably for maximum everything, is get one of those, one of those, get that and that and chuck it all in. There you go, and you've got it together. And then you've got the small with two blades, the medium with a, with a blade, the mat, the this, the that, and Fabulous you could stuff. go. And again, if you are going for the last one, the <coughs> with the rulers, what I would say is um, use FlexiPay to its max. Now go to the website, creatorcraft.tv. Everything we've just shown you, uh, excluding the dancing, will be on there. But actually, I'm sure that will be on there too. So, um, including projects from Jenny herself. You can literally download these right now. This is what's happening live on your TV screens. We've got the Halloween theme, yes. dare I say it. Um, uh, we are going to be giving you the, uh, the quilting classroom, as always, uh, and today's theme uh, is Halloween, and you're going to learn a few things. Now, I, uh, at this point, uh, will take a swift exit left. You, uh, can, you can go away. There you are. My sight is crossed out. I'm going to go and find a chair to sit in, and... Uh, Oh, there's so many gags. There's so many gags, and every single one of them is inappropriate. Ladies and gentlemen, Jenny Raymond. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. And I'm sorry about the dancing. It was a bit like moving a wardrobe. I, I just can't dance. You know, all right, I'm light and I'm lean and I can touch my toes, but I can't dance. But I can do twiddling and fiddling. This morning, we are gathered together to do a spot of Halloween stuff. And I'm using the group of fabrics you saw here and along with the other pack. It's going to be a fairly quick classroom today. All the information you will find is mainly on the PDF, but there are a couple of mistakes. If you go to my website, I have put the corrected PDF on there. It's on the front page. But if you're taking it off the Create and Craft website, can I just draw your attention to when you're going to be cutting the... Let's find the right things because I can't find the right things. It is to do with the cobweb. Number six, it should say six cut two, two inch by 12 and a half inch strips. All right, not one and a half. It should be two inches by one and a half, by 12 and a half. So that should be number two. There is another small mistake in there, which hopefully I will remember when I come to it. And it's another strip size. I just haven't actually remembered to add on. Here we are the right sizes. I wrote these very quickly. The cobweb, you will cut one two inch and two two inch. So wherever you see a one and a half, it should be a two in both the cobweb and indeed the other part of it. I just cut and pasted and didn't remember to do it. It was rushed this week. Okay, I'm going to start off with the pumpkin. And the pumpkin is the block that you can see clearly over here. Here we have the pumpkin. Now it's a block composed of strips. And whenever you come to design a block, and these are all my own design, although I did get the ideas for it, I googled Halloween and saw various blocks and thought, right, I can redo it. You've got a small amount of mathematics to do, whether you like it or not. And the pumpkin itself needed, I felt, to have a border around it. 
So to that end, I designed the very first pumpkin. But I put the strips going this away as opposed to that way, so it looked a little odd. But the purpose of showing you this is I wanted my pumpkin to come out at being, say, 10 inches, allowing an inch board around the edges. Whenever you do any patchwork, you always work in finished sizes. So you work from the end and then add your seam allowances on afterwards. So the pumpkin measures 10 from there to there. The border was one inch either side, making the block a 12 inch finished piece. It actually measures 12 and a half from one side to the other. So whenever you do any design, you take the seam allowances off, you do all the mathematics, and then you put the seam allowances back on again. So how do we do the pumpkin? The pumpkin is very simple. You will need to make the triangles that go on the corners. That's these little sections. And those I did by cutting a two and a half inch strip in one of the oranges and a two and a half inch strip in the green fabric. And that's where the little template, the easy angle, is so incredibly useful. Because I simply put the easy angle template on top of the two strips, which I had right sides together, although it really doesn't matter. Cut up one side of the little triangle. And these two pieces can be stitched together to form a square. And to make the pumpkin, you're going to need four of those. So let me chuck this on the floor. I promise to clear it up afterwards. The two triangles are then stitched together, and you will be using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Don't guess it. Please do it properly. When you've done that, open the triangle out, and I like to press the back seam open and flat. And that is where the clover arm is actually remarkably useful for getting up the seam. You're going to do that four times, so we want four of these little neatly pressed squares. You're then going to need a series of strips. The strips are listed on the PDF, but in case you can't download it, you need two, two and a half by four and a half. You need three, eight and a half by two and a half. And how the pumpkin goes together, to either end of the four and a half inch ones, you put a triangle. This is making one end of the triangle. You repeat on the other end. One goes there and one goes there. This is ever so easy to get wrong, so think about it, lay it out and do it. You join the three strips together, that are the eight and a halves by two and a halves, in the middle to make the wide body of the pumpkin. And when you've done that, it's going to come up looking something like this. You have no idea of the mess I've got to clear up later. So there we have our pumpkin. I then added a little stalk, and the stalk was seriously complicated. It was a little one and a half inch piece of the pumpkin color, and it was a little one and a half inch square. It was uh, two strips that were five inches long by one and a half inches wide. All three are joined together to make a little band. The band is then added to one end of the pumpkin. And it made, did make me smile, because when I did the pumpkin that's on the wall, I actually managed to get the cat side so carefully arranged the right way up, upside down. But hey, I could probably cast a spell on it and turn the wall the right way around. So if you are being fussy about which way your designs go, think about it when you add the pumpkin stalk. At this stage, my block isn't big enough, so I'm going to have to add some borders. And in order to make it big enough, I'm going to need to add down the sides a couple of strips. And these strips will be the length of the block. Your block should now measure nine and a half inches, raw edge to raw edge, by ten and a half inches the other way. Hopefully it does. If ever you find your, bo your blocks aren't coming up quite right and you need these blocks to be finished the right size, make these strips a bit bigger. So I'm adding two short strip strips to the side. I'm then going to add a longer strip to the bottom and a longer strip to the top, just making the entire block a little bit bigger. The bottom one measures two and a half inches and the top one measures another one and a half. Both strips are 12 and a half inches long. Those all get joined together to form the pineapple block. Sorry, the pineapple block, it's a pumpkin. It doesn't look in the least bit like a pineapple. Right, so pumpkin, okay. Yours will end up looking something like this, scale-wise. Right, the bat block, which you haven't seen, which is here, ha-ha, flying across the sky, it's a bat. The bat block is made up of a series of squares. Now, I decided to have, again, another border around the bat block. And the bat block design works in five squares by five squares. So as I was adding an inch either side, that meant if this was going to be a 12-inch block, you take an inch off there, an inch off there, which means your middle's got to be 10. If I've got five units one way and five units the other, how big's the unit? Two, quite right. 
but you have to add your seam allowances on. So you will cut out a series of two and a half inch squares. And the design is extremely easy to put together. Once more, you're going to make a whole load of those little triangles. So it's a two and a half inch strip. Cut out the triangles using the easy angle tool. Makes life very simple if I can find where I put it. There it is. And you'll have to make five of these. So you want five triangles made in exactly the same way we did for the pumpkin. I sincerely hope you're recording this. These all get laid out in exactly the way that the back goes. Let's get it round the right way. It's all that dancing with Dean this morning. Quite puts one off. Moving a wardrobe indeed. I'll have his guts for garters. Let's have that one round the right way. There we go. So that's sort of the bat's head that goes across there. You'll then be filling it in with a variety of little squares. Now I have to confess that when I do things like these, I will always put the designs, lay them out and check I've got them in the right place. And then I will sew them together very carefully. If you're one of these people a bit like me that's happy to go at things like a bull in a china shop, unless it comes to dancing, well I can't, then it's not a bad idea to either number them or lay them out and stitch a pair at a time and another pair and then put them back together very carefully. I'm trying to get them all back in the right order. I seem to have lost one. There we go. He goes in there. And put the other pieces in. So lay it out. I'm doing this slowly so you can watch carefully. And remember, of course, if you recorded it, you can sensibly pause it to make certain you've got the design in exactly the right place. He goes there and he goes there. You've actually got 10 of the plain blue squares, 10 of the bat colored fabric, and five of the little two inch or two and a half inch when you cut the fabric, little triangles put together. And that's how your bat gets laid out. I would probably sew it together in sections. So I would probably sew those four together, that six together, those four together, that six together, add three onto there, those two onto there, and then I join that section onto that one, that section onto that one, and the two halves straight across. I deliberately didn't bother to do all the stages, A, because I didn't have time, and B, because you can see how it's done. I like to press the seams open and flat, but when I added a little one and a half inch cut border all the way round, I pressed the seams deliberately towards the outside edge. And the reason for that is I actually wanted to have around the bat a little ledge so it looked as though the bat was framed. And it also meant that there wasn't such a bulk here in the seam if I opened it out because that going back on itself would have made quite a little step. So sometimes I do push the seams to one side, particularly when doing a border. So we've got the bat block. Let's throw that lot on the floor. Now we're going to come to the witch. And I find this particular thing, the circle cut, really useful to use because you've got a variety of circles on it. If you are going to cut out a circle, the simplest way to do it is decide on how big the circle. Lay the circle cut template on a folded square of fabric. I've had to be fairly parsimonious with my fabric because I was running out. Put the circle so the heavy black edge is on the fold of the fabric. You can then get the medium-sized rotary cutter round certainly the first three or maybe even four. After that, the smaller cutter works quite well. But nothing really seems to cut except the designated circle cut cutter round that very little section there. But you can always draw a line if you want it that small and cut it out. You don't have to put the cutter. But I'll just show you how the cutter actually does work. I'm cutting this circle to a nine inch circle. So I'm using the second line in from the end. It's very conveniently all marked. So guard off your cutter, slot the cutter in, turn it round, and I'm just turning my body round as I go because I never want to cut across my body. This gives me a circle. I just missed a bit there. there we go. How I made the witch block, very, very complicated this. You need a backing square. Now you'll see the reason for absolutely having to have this big 12 and a half inch square. Many, many, many patchwork blocks are 12 and a half inches. Therefore, if you're going to do an applique one, a plique one, call it what you will. If you get this square, lay it on the fabric, cut a square out that side, it's going to fit all the other network of blocks. So I used my 12 and a half inch square, just cut round it. No hard sums at all. I then took the circle 
and the circle can be applied. What I wanted to make very certain was that I had the straight grain of the circle aligned with the same straight grain of the block. So if you fold your fabric in half and in half again and press it, and also fold your square in half, the background square, in half one way and in half the other way. This will give you the north, south, west, east lines. You can then lay the circle on top, aligning the creases. If you get the creases all lined up, your circle will be bang in the middle and also you have the grain correct. Now what you could do with this is you could have bonded it down with some form of fusible web you could try sticking it down with the fabric glue and don't use too much. You could try pinning the watsits out of it and then either tacking it round the edge, basting if you happen to come from that part of the world, America, and then doing something like either a blanket stitch or a satin stitch around it. I did a blanket stitch round mine. I then cut the witch out. Now, for the witch, I happen to use a fusible web. But again, you could have cut the witch out and glued her on with the fabric glue. On the PDF, you will find there is a witch at the back. And if the witch isn't big enough, you can blow it up I mean, on the photocopier, not literally on there. So you will find there is a witch. If you're new to applique, it might pay you to just knock a bit off her nose and perhaps round her chin off because you don't want to have too many sharp points. And it's not going to matter if the witch has got a slightly rounded nose or a slightly not too pointed a hat. Because if you're going to do this um, sometimes on the machine, it can be quite difficult, particularly if you're going to satin stitch, to go around a really sharp point. So you can blow that design up to how big or reduce it to as small as you like. I, having used this fusible web, would peel the paper off the back. And that felt that we've got was a very nice felt to use. I like the fact that you've got decent sized sheets, you've got a thinnish felt, so it absolutely uh, sat in stitch and appliqued very, very nicely. It glued on well, and putting a fusible web on the back and ironing it on meant that the iron did go through the felt very nicely. So the black witch can then be stitched to go across the moon. And it is your choice as to how you have the witch. So I think that's fairly self-explanatory. Moving on from the witch, let's get rid of all my witchy bits. The hat. Now, I specifically use the 30 degree template to make the hat. And when it comes to making the hat, really you can have the hat any size you like. To make the hat that I did, I cut a strip of fabric, and my strip of fabric was about nine inches high. I laid the template on it and cut myself an angle. Now, you could have your witch's hat smaller, you could have your witch's hat the entire size. Your witch's hat can be any size you like. Mine just happened to be this particular size. Lay the template on there, cut up one side, cut up the next side. Now, it then occurred to me I could use a trick that we've used with the fat cat before, where in order to get the pieces to fit either side, you take a same sized strip, the same height as the hat. You just need a little bit. The strip needs to be the height of the hat plus however wide you want it to be either side. So I fold it in half. I've gone for about a six and a half inch strip. Being of lazy, I just simply took the ruler, laid it on the fabric and cut either side of it. Thought that'll do nicely and it does. Now when we've done this, we're just going to pop the ruler on here and we want the very top of the ruler to come to the very top of the fold. If you put this on the cutting mat there, and you put the top of the ruler like that, so it goes exactly through the corner. Line the lines up on the template. If I have it the right way up, it might make it much easier for you all out there. So get the lines up on the template, aligned with the lines on the cutting mat. Tip of it exactly there. Hold it down well. Cut up there. This sections, or these two sections, will now fit either side of the hat. There's my hat there, and that piece will fit that side, and that piece will fit that side, thereby turning it into a nice, neat rectangle. What I did then was I added the base of the hat, which was literally a one-inch strip. Now, I really couldn't be bothered to fiddle around with cutting it exact, so I've added a little bit on. So this is where the good old ruler is remarkably good because you can lay the ruler on the top and cut a couple of little bits off. 
Once you've got the hat made and you've squared it off, so to speak, all you would need to do then is to add a variety of strips. And it's not a bad idea to make the hat the same length, i.e. you want to make it 12 and a half inches, that away. And if you want to make it a little wider, you could add strips down the side. So the hat is made by using the 30 degree template. Now we've got to G you up about the voting. So, Dean! You weren't expecting that move, were you? Uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're running out of time. Remember that uh, we have got all of our presenters and guests up. You need to email in and you need to vote. Now, the thing is, we had lots of emails in this morning. Thank you. I know it's early. We haven't put a score on. Uh, we haven't put your 10 on there. So, of course, remember, if you'd like to email in right now, studio at crazycraft.tv, you can vote for Jenny and I in our little... Well, we, we were expressing ourselves through the medium of dance this morning. I think we were, anyway. Uh, and um, and uh, we were went a bit freestyle, to be honest with you. And we want your votes right now. Studioacraft.tv, email in. What do you think? What do you think of Stay Kips? Uh, he's not a bad mover, is he, for his age? Uh, and I tell you, we want tens. Tens, tens and tens. But the voting closes at quarter on every hour. In the next hour, uh, Mr Nigel May is going to be here with a special surprise. He'll be dancing and he'll be after your votes as well. So just wanted to get me judging chair and uh, get voting. <laughs> Who do you think he is? Crave something or somebody? What's it? Hey. Hmm. Oh, oh, come on, darling. we need you. My quilting friends, I need you to vote for me. I know I'm a rubbish dancer but I'm quite a good quilter. Get on with it. I am, right. Okay. When it comes to doing the fat cap, we have done the fat cap to death on many, many occasions. And again, you can choose the height, the size of your fat cat. On your PDF, I haven't fussed too much about doing the fat cap because many of you got the fat cap template from last time when I did the amazing fat cat with, made from the chenille. And if you're looking for the PDF for that, that's the one that was on Easter. And you'll find that on the Create and Craft page on my website, JennyRaymond.com. So if you need to know the fat cat, download that. But he works in exactly the same way. Take the fat cat template, lay it on the fabric, decide on whether you want a fat one or a thin one, cut up one side. Having cut the fat cat shape, you can then take another piece of fabric that is the same height, and literally do the same trick. This is a slightly different template to the other one, but it works the same. Point of template on the top there, make sure everything's straight, cut up the side there. These pieces will fit then either side of the fat cat. When you've done that, and if the cameras can come and look at my cat at the one over here, you'll see that the cat has been given ears, just like the PDF. I've given him a black felt tail and some woolly whiskers. So the cat can be done. And the thing you want to do with the cat is make sure, obviously, it is the same height if you're going to make a table runner, and maybe the same width as the hat. Always a good idea. Make it a bit bigger because you can cut something off afterwards. So the cat, now the cobweb. The cobweb uses the 45 degree triangle. And this is a template that I've used for a design that's called Kaleidoscope. I'll be showing you that more at the end. The Kaleidoscope comes from or the design is cut from, three strips stitched together, and I use the happy Halloween one. These strips are all two inches wide, so if you're following the PDF, remember, that was where a mistake was. I wrote it in a hurry, I'm sorry. We can't be perfect. Even my husband, that his cotton socks, although he likes to think he's perfect. Sorry, he isn't really. I've got my three strips, two inches wide, stitched together to make a band. I've pressed the seam open and flat. Template goes on the top. Now, this is the 45-degree template. You're going to need eight sections, and you can get eight sections out of a strip cut across the fabric. That's the widest point. You might notice mine deliberately aren't straight at the end. That's because if you offset them, you can usually get a little bit more out of it. So if I pop that on there, I can slide the template nearly to the end there. There we go. So up that. And, of course, you never cut towards yourself. You simply flip it over, replace the template, pop it on like that, and cut. You'll want to do this eight times. So that's one one way. And now you can leave the band as it is, turn it round the other way, and cut up the other side. Once you've done all eight, you will have to sew them together. And they get stitched together in sets of two. And you are going to need to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. 
What I found was easiest was to actually start at the wide end here and sew towards the thinner end. So to the sewing machine. And what I've got here is I've got the regular foot on because on this nice little machine, which I must confess I really like, it's got a nice carrying handle, it's a card case, it does all the stitches, it's got a speed control on here, it's got a forwards and backwards, it does fixing, it's got its own needle threader, it will do your drop feed dogs so you can do your free motion. It comes with a free walking foot and indeed a free, free motion foot. What I like about it is I can move the needle over to the magic number of 5.5, which sets the needle at a quarter of an inch from that edge of the presser foot. So I'm sewing off in little scraps down the edge of the fabric here. And just make sure you keep those seams together. I've forgotten my barbecue skewer, but I'll just use the point of the scissors. Don't put the scissors underneath the foot because you might break the needle. And down we go to the bottom there. There we go. It's sitting on there. Got it. Got caught around something all that excitement earlier on with Dean moving a wardrobe indeed I'll have his guts for garters later come on I hope you're voting you've only got about a minute or two left to vote alright so come on you're recording this so you can not watch me for a minute it's much more important just think all you quilt groups out there you won't have to get some stick if you don't vote for me Whoa. right when you've done this you're going to repeat this four times we need four sections what look like that the clover mini iron is really good for just pressing the back seam open. You don't want to press the entire thing because you might stretch the edges. And believe you me, the edges are on the bias and they stretch. So we want four sections. Unos, duo, tres, cuatro, just so I can speak a foreign language. When you've got the four sections, you sew the four sections together. So that gets stitched to that that gets stitched to that, then the two halves go together. And it'd be ever so nice if you actually managed to get the points together in the middle. Having got your cobweb design, it possibly is a little lumpy bumpy there, simply because you are at the junction of a load of pieces. We have to square it off. And that's where the little easy angle template I found was very useful. Because I could use it to guesstimate vaguely how big a triangle I needed for the four corners. Because you'll need a triangle on every other corner. One goes there, one goes there, one goes there, and one goes there. Allow the triangle to be a little bit bigger. It really doesn't matter. Put the triangle on, stitch it. When you've stitched it, that is where that nice big square is remarkably useful because you can use the square to square it up. And yet again, just as we've done before, this will need some borders around it. Square it up to being nine and a half inches. If you can't get nine and a half inches out of it for some reason, your seams are too big, make the border strips a little bit bigger. And I've cut border strips, two strips that go one side, and another strip goes the other side. You stitch the strips on, open them out, and then a further strip goes at the top, and a further strip goes at the bottom. You can do this design any size you like. I've just made it fit a 12 and a half inch square. For instance, if you made the strips a little wider, you could make the design considerably bigger. And again, use the little template here to guesstimate how big a triangle you need on the corners. When you've got it to the right size, the square is absolutely ideal for popping on the top there, lining it up, and then squaring it up up the corners there. It helps if you have it the right way up. Jennifer, there we go. So I can use put that square on top. You have no idea of how invaluable these squares actually are. I wouldn't be without them. So it can be squared up. Now what I did with my cobweb is I wanted to have it slightly more cobwebby. So before I throw it on the floor, I literally took some wool and lay the wool on the top there and just couch it in place. You could have used very thin strips of felt. You could also have used the Clover or the So Easy Bias Binding Maker and made really thin bias binding. And this can be laid on the top. Now when you've done all these various designs, you could put them all together to make the table runner we have on the wall here. So I've got all five running along here. I then put a border on it and mounted it onto that fabulous fusible fluff. And I think it's Ardino's turn to have a go. Uh, I've just seen a rival in a, in a tuxedo. 
Yeah, all right, all right, fair enough. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got some bad news. It's coming up to quarter two. You've got about two minutes to vote. You've got two minutes to get your emails in, studio at craigscroft.tv, with ten on. That's all you need to do. Uh, Dean and Jenny, ten. That's all you need to vote. Um, it started rather well, and then Jenny decided... Uh, I'll give it a, a bit of uh, uh, sort of background to this. Jenny said, I'm going to do a bit of free motion. We were expressing ourselves through the medium of dance. I think that we were saying, I think what we were actually saying was, get off. Look at that. Stay on the peels, Dean. Back to Jenny. <laughs> I'm never going to live that down. <laughs> Just go and hide my light under a bushel. <laughs> okay. So your table runner can be made up out of the blocks. Or you could, if you wish, use all the blocks and they bring in the bat block. And the only reason for tossing the bat block out was I didn't want my table runner that long. So the table runner is made up of your blocks the same size put together. Added a border onto that wonderful sofa. I do like this. I'm afraid I've become a firm fan. No tacking, just press. Right, let's do the table mat. The table mat, where is it gone? This uses the uneven nine patch, and we've not really demonstrated the uneven nine patch before. That's what it's meant to look like, the centre section being a series of squares that get cut back. Now, the trouble is with the uneven nine patch, it was making the middle. I thought, oh, forget that. So let me just tidy my bench up a little bit, get rid of the old witch. You can go on the floor, chuck you out the way. It's what I do with all my men. Get rid of them, swing them out the way there. So I took a ten and a half inch square. The template, and there are instructions that come with it, so don't throw this bit of paper away, it does actually tell you the instructions, so keep it. On the template, you will find there is a line, and you want to make certain you've got the right line. What I did with my 10 and a half inch square was I folded in half and in half again to find the middle. I pressed it. This gave me creases. Putting the template and make certain you have the right template, it does actually say place line on edge of ten and a half uneven nine patch block. Put the template. Line up the little mark on the template with the crease. And I marked the edge of the template on the fabric. I drew round it. I repeated on each of the four sides. I then cut all those arcs. So that ends up with something that looks a bit like this. The arced one. What I found was useful was to then make very certain I could see the little marks in the middle there because you've got to cut your ovals out. Now, when it comes to cutting the ovals, again, there is a line. Now, I've slightly changed my mind on this and I've lost the relevant piece now. It fell on the floor earlier. Where's it gone to? Is when I came to do this, what I actually did was I drew a line on the fabric. Let's find the right one. There's one. I drew a line on the fabric rather than fold it because I found it was better to put the template so that I could get the drawn line on the line I drew on the fabric, draw one half, flip the template round and draw the other half. I felt if you did as they instructed and fold the fabric and then cut it out, you weren't allowing for the thickness of the fabric and the fold. So you've got to cut four ovals. And again, you want to make certain you mark the center of the ovals. Once you've got your ovals done, we're going to put it together. You want to put the middle of the oval to the middle of the inside. I prefer to piece it with the inside on the top. Let's get right sides together. That's just confusing you all 100%. There we go. And pop that in there. Having pinned it in there, middle to middle, if you bend it round, right the way round to there, and line it up so you can get these absolutely together. Pin. You will need a little forest of pins because you can flex it all the way along and do the same thing the other end. Pin. When you've done that, it's going to look a little bit like this. A whole load of pins. Turn it around this way. Whole load of pins. I then sewed right the way around there, easing the pins out as I went. Comsa. Notice the black stitching. You will add one piece to one side of the block and the other piece to the other side of the block. When you've done that, you've only got to fit in the other two sections. And when it comes to fitting in the other two sections, it's a bit like this. So you have piece on either side. Again, middle of this. I know this isn't quite the same fabric because I ran out. Middle to middle. Get the middles together. Fit it on and sew it round. Bend it, that's the end you want to make have together. 
So all the way around. And what you're looking at, and it does look a little strange, is in the seams, the two seams will actually run slightly over each other at the junction. So that's what you're watching. Once you've done all four, it's going to end up something like this. It needs a bit of fluff. And you know one of the nice things about that fluff was that you can join it together, because again, I was running out of fluff. I've used so much of it. Place the circle on top of the fluff. You might want, though, to think about applying a pumpkin. And these little pumpkin templates were seriously complicated to do. That means they were very easy. I literally drew around them on some felt. And you could either use a fusible web, or that is where this glue would be remarkably useful. It would be quite a good idea to put the pumpkin onto the center here before you put it onto the fluff. So lay your pumpkin out. And the pieces were fairly easy to get together. Close them all up. Little pumpkin stalk there. Bond it on. Clover iron or something else like that can be bonded in place. I then chose to satin stitch around mine, but there's no reason why you couldn't use, oh dear, that dreadful word, hand, and hand sew them in place or you could buttonhole them down. Once you've applied the pumpkin, that's when you're going to take the middle of this, Charlie, your fusible fluff. I hope you all gave me a 10. I bet you didn't. And onto the backing fabric. What I would do at that stage is I would bomb the whole lot together. And the reason why this fluff is good, you need the big iron, not this thing, is it will stick if you just move the iron gently, and I ironed everything from this side, flipped it over and ironed it from the other side. Once you've done that, very briefly as to how you finish it off, you will actually find in the foldy roly book, which I know many of you have got, is how you bind round things. It's there. It's also got in it how you bind straight things. So it's got the tablecloth, table runner in there as well. So your binding, how you do it, is in that book. When it comes to doing the binding, what I would do is I would stitch all the way around the edge. I know it's not the Halloween mat. Cut my binding. Attach the binding. And this is one of the designs you can do using the 30-degree template in case you're hesitating about whether to buy it or not. I've used a 2-inch wide bias cut strip folded in half. You stitch the strip on. Bend it over and it gets stitched onto the back. This has been folded deliberately in half. The way the ends get joined together is when you come round, let's have it the right way up, Jennifer, give it the right way up. Lay this little end inside, fold the raw edge over. I'm getting my own words now. There we go. Lay this little end inside there, fold that bit over there, sew the entire thing down and fold it back. Slip stitch it in by hand and you'll end up with a beautiful round. When you've done that, if you wanted to add a bit of quilting, you could literally add a bit of quilting. So table mat, not difficult to do, using the uneven nine patch and the pumpkin. And then very finely, just to give you a quick whip through the spider, and I've forgotten spiders have eight legs. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> four pipe cleaners would be useful. I've got three pipe cleaners. I bound them together with a bit of string. I've got the um, puffball, not puffball, what do you call it? I've forgotten what it's called now. Um, the pom-pom ball template. Trick, lots and lots and lots of layers of wool, lengths of wool, and hold them together with a pipe cleaner. Use it like a threading device, because then you can just thread it through the hole. As you threaded it through the hole, when you've decided you've had enough, get that bit out of the way, all I would do then is take me scissors, and I think our dean can come back and tell me how wonderful I am, and I'm just going to cut up between the two there. There we go. I'll trim the edges off there. We'll make a spider. And I'll save it to give away on the next show. Come on, Ardeen. You can like, give that away. Uh, we can most certainly give it away. Have we got lots of emails to give it away to? Well, I believe we've had a couple of emails. Only a couple? Well, that's Oh, my word. Look at it around here. Yes, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? Right, here's me spider. There are me legs, which I've tied together. Eight. I know there's only six on this one. This, okay. is, a, this is a special spider. It's a raiment spider. It, you only find them in the forests of dark West Africa. Tie it round there. Well, apparently, we've had over 120 votes in the hour. 
Really? Isn't that spectacular? I think that is absolutely wonderful. I think that's fine. Thank you so much for your input and thank you for doing that because I know it's early on a Sunday. You've got one eye glued together and a cup of coffee in your dressing gown. Yep. And you're thinking, okay, I'll email. Uh, please uh, keep, those, uh, keep those emails coming in because in the next hour, the lovely Nigel May is going to be here and Christine, who's like saying, who's just shaking her head like that. <laughs> She's going, oh no. Uh, but uh, remember, it's all about the dance today, but it's all about the crafting, strictly crafting. What we're trying to do is make it fun, because we're very aware here at uh, Crate and Craft that we like to have fun. We do like to have don't fun. Don't we, darling? Yes, and I do. And I know the, the thing whole about it is, there. The thing you about know, it is... I could it, it with broomstick. You could? Yes. Well, actually, good, good looks. Um, but uh, what we want you to do is vote every hour. Uh, Steph's going to be here later at night, I think it's going to be. And I, I think I may even at 11 o'clock be getting to dance to the beautiful young Chloe. Listen, and you're not giving more marks than you've given me. All right? Got it? Oh, uh, Chloe, she's. Oh, oh hello. Yes, oh, but you see, when I'm out on the circuit, I shall find out. Most of you can win in the raffle, isn't it? That'll be death in a classroom. If I hurt, know that you only gave me four. Four. I'll not tell you a vital piece of information. Um, Jenny, I don't get to vote. No, this, I'm the this, mere is, pawn this is when this. I'm out on the circuit. This is all the people who should have given me ten. Oh, oh yes. Oh, don't wow. mess with Jenny. Oh, don't mess with Jenny. Dear yes. Jenny. Yes. Now, now you know why I've had all those many husbands. They don't mess with Jenny. Oh, no. Right, spider. You many see, of them they can't account for. Right, do we need to do any housekeeping about it? <laughs> um, uh, the pom pom maker and trice, I'll do something, I've done anything for it. Yeah, Three, two, seven, seven, one, I haven't, seriously. I've got uh, ready to die. The pom pom maker and trice, can I just say thank you, by the way, can I just say thank you to Jenny, because there's not many people uh, in the world that can do what she's just done for the last hour, because it's very difficult. Live TV, demonstrating, talking, chatting, you laugh, but seriously, it's an, it's an amazing skill. Thank you so much for that education, because people love to watch, and a lot of the time with these shows, we do have to uh, talk about yes. product, we do have yep. to sort of give you the details, that's our job. But every now and then it's nice to let the experts do their thing, and I'm sure and you appreciate thank you. that. And I'm really honoured actually to do it. Good. But you trust me enough to stand here and do it. Well, I was just there and it's a catch I know, anyway. You know, I I'm know. just there, I'm just there. Uh, if you'd like to have, have any of these items and make mm -hmm. any of these things, particularly mm -hmm. this beautiful runner that Jenny's made today and giving those individual blocks, it's all about the knowledge and information. More than that, though, it's about getting the right bits. Creatorcraft.tv is uh, the website you need to go to for all these items. Have a scroll through and the live page it will come up and all the items will be there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we started the show with a bit of strictly crafty dancing. We decided that maybe ballroom wasn't for us, so we went freestyle. And only in the Jenny Remnant st uh, Raymond style, I'm going to call you Jenny Random, I think, from now on. <laughs> Jenny Random style, we went freestyle. I got my hips out. Look at that. Basically, you tell this an 80s dancer. Now, 9.6! Yay! <laughs> Blimey! <laughs> out of 100. Oh, out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> we got 9.6!